E3 has now come and gone, and while the next few days will undoubtedly be filled with more announcements, gameplay looks, and more, the main press conferences from most of the major companies who present have concluded. A lot of great games were shown, a few fun and memorable moments occurred, and we did get at least one or two really fun surprise announcements that I certainly didn't expect to see. But is it just me, or did this year feel a little... lacking? I look forward to E3 every year, and like I said, this year certainly did have at least a few surprises. But in general, everything just felt slow or not as exciting. But that's not why I'm here today. I don't want to sit here and talk about how the show is dying or anything like that. There's plenty of people online who try and say that every year. Instead, I want to talk about the games. In this video, I'm going to just briefly go over a few of my favorite games from the show and talk about a few others that I sort of had a passing interest in and then we'll just go from there. I'll admit that I wasn't really on the Cyberpunk 2077 hype train until about this year. I've kept an eye on the game since its initial reveal, but I'm not the biggest fan of The Witcher, and I thought it might end up being more like that. But now, with a few gameplay looks and some idea what the story might be, I'm eager to check it out. Cyberpunk as a genre is kinda hard to really nail down since Blade Runner kinda ruined or perfected the formula depending on who you talk to, but I feel like the folks at CD Projekt Red have a good understanding of what they're doing. The gameplay they showed off last year was pretty fun to watch, and if it ends up being anything like the trailer they showed this year, I'm all in. Plus, John Wick is coming along for the ride, so that's an instant win in my book if you ask me. Speaking of Keanu Reeves, this year we saw a few fun moments of presentation. Keanu Reeves coming out on stage for Cyberpunk was a fun surprise, Ikumi Nakamura was adorable and felt very genuine in her delivery when she was speaking, and then Bam Bam became one of the most memorable parts of Ubisoft's presentation that was mostly filled with Tom Clancy games and old lady memes. Overall, a fun year for presenters, I'd say. But enough of that, let's get back to games. Animal Crossing fans are some of the most ravenous fans I've seen in gaming and I'm including Undertale folks in that. For a game about being patient and just enjoying life, people really wanted this new game, and a lot of people were not happy that it's not coming out until early next year. In terms of gameplay, I'm pretty excited from what I saw. The thought of building a village or resort or whatever we're building from the ground up is intriguing for an Animal Crossing game, and I'm eager to get my hands on some other smaller tweaks that I saw. Things like being able to move trees instead of just planting new ones, or being able to make a path with a shovel instead of throwing easily removable tiles on the ground are pretty awesome. And the possibility with the crafting the game will offer has me curious to see how far this rabbit hole goes. Throw in 8 player multiplayer and a whole host of options that could bring, and I'm ready to see what happens on March 20th. While we're talking about Nintendo, I'm just gonna fit this in here right real quick. I'm over the moon with happiness in the inclusion of Banjo-Kazooie and Smash Brothers. And Dragon Quest is there too, I guess. While much of the internet may have scoffed at the inclusion of the hero, I just don't mind. Dragon Quest is a series I might not personally enjoy, but I know it has a lot of fans around the world and including the fighter in the game shows that Nintendo clearly knows that too. Plus, it appears that there are at least four different versions of the hero in the game, so if you don't want to play as Pegasus from Yu-Gi-Oh, you can choose to play as Luffy, Swordfighter Goku, or Angry Rock Lee instead. Plus, the character seems to have a unique looking gameplay mechanic that'll likely be too complex for my simple means, but I'll try it out and say that I have an understanding of it anyways for the sake of not looking like a total failure of a Smash player. As for Banjo, I do have one small critique. Why? Is Banjo using Kazooie as a club? Kazooie is your friend, Banjo. She doesn't deserve this punishment. Otherwise, yeah, I'm happy Banjo's in Smash. Give me, give me now. I don't want to wait till fall. In general, those are kind of the only games or announcements that really got me excited this year. But there were a few other games I want to talk about quick that I was either excited about or have something to say. I was already on board with Doom Eternal after its first showing, but seeing a bit more of a deeper dive into the game this year got me just that much more excited. The new battle mode sounds fun, the new weapons and monster ideas they might have behind it has me intrigued even more, and I'm honestly just eager to shoot demons back to hell later this year. I feel like they could have put a bit more flair into the combat for this game, but The Outer Worlds still looks like a lot of fun. 
I'm not really looking forward to this for the groundbreaking combat or anything though, since that's not what the guys who made the game were really known for. The dialogue and choice systems the game is supposed to offer have me excited, and I'm just eager to get my hands on it when it comes out in October. This one was a lovely surprise to throw into the Nintendo Direct. If it isn't obvious by now that I like the Muppets and anything Jim Henson's made, then me being excited about this game probably will help cement that. All I can hope for is that the tactical combat is solid in this, because I've played a lot of poorly made tactical combat games and I do not want that for this game. I'm eager to see what happens with Dark Crystal with the Netflix show, and seeing that they're willing to make a game out of it has me even more hopeful. Now if only they could make a remake of Muppet Monster Adventure, I'd be set. I was already hyped for Luigi's Mansion 3, but the inclusion of two different multiplayer functions is kinda awesome. And the only thing I really have a fear for is uh, that Gooigi doesn't just become the new Bowsette. Like instead of Bowsette we get, like, I, I don't I don't know, Goozer. A beautiful looking indie title that dropped into the Xbox press conference. Way of the Woods reminds me a lot of games like Journey. Its smaller scope and gorgeous details have me intrigued. The gameplay looks simple, but memorable and at least somewhat impactful, and I'm definitely going to have to keep my eye on this one for the foreseeable future. I would love to see gameplay or really anything else from Deathloop, but the idea of two people fighting one another in a Groundhog Day style narrative from the people who made Dishonored sounds fun and potentially philosophical, but that's a whole different thing. I have a lot of theories on how this game will play out, including there being a point where Colt and Juliana kill one another a few times, find out nothing changes, and then team up to find out what's really going on. But since they didn't really share more than a quick little trailer, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. When the concept of Become Anyone in Watch Dogs Legion first leaked a week before the conference, I sat there and said to myself that I was going to find the weirdest person in the game, regardless of if they had stats like you die if you turn left, and I would try and beat the game with them, add a little extra flavor and challenge to it. Now, I just want to make an army of grannies with that one teenage boy that they sort of adopted into their sewing group who just wants to destroy the system now. I would probably like this Avengers game more if they showed us actual gameplay and not just clearly pre-rendered bits of gameplay. And while I do like the direction this one seems to be going, I'm not quite sold on it yet. If they can give us some good gameplay footage and, you know, maybe a look at the story or the villains or anything like that, maybe then we'll talk. As far as Marvel games are concerned, the one I'm more excited for is Ultimate Alliance 3. And while everyone's quick to say, oh, it just looks like a mobile game, I don't care. If it's got good combat, good team-ups, and a good roster of characters, that's what I want out of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And that's what we're getting. I'm not one of the people who was overly hyped for Final Fantasy VII Remake, mainly because I was more of a Kingdom Hearts fan and didn't play the original until I was much older. But the combat looks solid in the remake and the visuals are impressive. Given we've only seen stuff from Midgard though, I'm assuming it's still an episodic release. And that'll probably keep me from getting it until it's all out, since Nomura famously likes to take his time with games. <coughs> Kingdom Hearts 3. <coughs> As far as next-gen hardware is concerned, I could honestly care less about specs or technical talk, because at the end of the day, I just want to play some games. And Halo Infinite does sound fun, but that's just because the people at Microsoft keep telling me it is. Show me this game in action instead of dropping little nuggets of possible story plots, and then maybe I'll be interested in Project Scarlet in this game. Until then, I'm just going to assume it's another Halo game that I get to teabag people in in multiplayer. I am still very much hyped for Borderlands 3. I just want to play the game. I am a fan of Borderlands, I've played everything about it, and I'm ready to see where the game goes next. Plus, the free DLC they dropped for Borderlands 2 is great, mainly because they just made the Handsome Collection free with PlayStation Plus. So for me, sometime between now and September 13th, I'll be returning to Pandora to get ready for the next wacky adventure in the Borderlands. Those are pretty much the games that I'm happy to see at the show. I have problems here and there, yeah, with the overall show and some of the games they showed and things like that, but 
overall, I'm happy to see some new and exciting games on the horizon and to get better looks at some of the games that I already knew about. So let me know what games you're excited for in the comments down below, and let's just look forward to another great year of gaming.